video is all about Commodore's two entries into the home Pong console market, the 2000K and 3000H. We'll go into a little bit of the history behind these machines, then I'll give you a demo of them working. In the mid-1970s, sales of Pong home gaming consoles took off, beginning with Atari's home Pong console in 1975, and followed by a host of other companies like Sears, Coleco, Magnavox, Philips, and many others looking to cash in on the latest consumer craze. While there were dozens of companies selling home Pong consoles, all the consoles were based around chips made by just a few companies like General Instrument, National Semiconductor, Texas Instruments, and MOS Technology. MOS Technology was a small chip maker in Norristown, PA, who was in the business of designing their own chips and selling them, most notably their MOS 6502 CPU, and they also provided contract chip design and chip fabrication as a service to external customers. MOS is of particular interest to us in this video because they were purchased by Commodore in 1976. Also in 1976, an MOS technology chip first entered the home Pong market when Allied Leisure, a company out of Florida, used an MOS 7600 microcontroller in their Name of the Game and Name of the Game 2 home Pong consoles. So what do we know about the MOS 7600? Well, not a whole lot. I wasn't able to find any documentation about them, not even data sheets. However, I was able to ask former MOS slash Commodore engineer Al Sharpentier if he had any recollections. I'm incredibly grateful to Bill Hurd for making this happen. So Bill, if you ever happen to see this video, sincerely, I thank you. Likewise, Al, thank you for your time. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to answer a few questions. According to Al, the MOS 7600 project was spearheaded by a guy named Mike Canning from the MOS engineering team. The engineers at MOS who worked on the chip to make it happen were Al Sharpentier of Vic fame, Bob Yanis of Sid fame, and Eric Yang who went on to work on the TED chip with Dave DiOrio. Al recalled that the first production run of 7600 chips had a bug in them. The bug was that when you played a game of soccer the whole way through, it would reset before displaying the final score on the screen. They managed to fix this by finding a way to freeze it before the reset happened so that it would freeze with the score still displayed. So if you have an early device with a 7600 in it, I'm guessing it'd be one of the Allied Leisure devices. The way you can tell if you have a chip from the first production run or not is if you play a game of soccer and you can see the score. In 1977, the MOS 7600 was used in the Coleco Telstar Gemini consoles and an MOS 7600 chip was used in every Coleco Telstar arcade cartridge. At some point in 1977, Commodore decided that instead of just selling their MOS chips to other manufacturers, they would enter the Pong console consumer market themselves. With that, Commodore released the 2000K and 3000H consoles, but only to the European market. Kit Spencer's quote from Brian Bagnall's book, Commodore, A Company on the Edge, hints that there may have only been a single production run that was sold during the Christmas season in 1977. Kit was quoted as saying, it was very much a short-term product. We sold the original Pong-type machines we had at Christmas quite happily. The Commodore 2000K and 3000H were similar devices. They both play four different games, tennis, football, or soccer in the US, squash, and a shooting game which required a light gun that was sold separately. Both systems supported two or four players. They could both be powered by an external 9-volt DC power supply or by inserting six AA batteries. They both had a built-in speaker for sound, and they both output PAL video as an RF signal that could be tuned in on channel 36 using a television. As for the differences, my 3000H was made in Hong Kong while my 2000K was made in Korea. I don't have any information on whether that was the case with all the devices. The 2000K was powered by an MOS 7601 chip, which was the PAL equivalent of the NTSC MOS 7600. This is where it gets interesting. Cameron Kaiser's excellent Secret Weapons of Commodore website says the 3000H utilized an MOS 5601 instead of the 7601. However, I pulled the heatsink off the top of the chip in my 3000H and it is a 7601 just like the 2000K. It appears as though some were 7601 and some were 5601, but the details here elude me. Both of these systems are still in working condition, so I'll give you a quick demo starting with the 2000K. 
The TV aerial connection uses what's called a Belling Lee connector, which are common in Europe. Unfortunately for those of us in the United States, these connectors look deceptively similar to standard coax cables, but you can see that the center pin is much larger and they're not compatible with typical US televisions. To make this work, I'm going to use this conversion box that will accept the European aerial lead connector as input, tune the RF signal, and output HDMI. For power, I'll use this adjustable power supply set to 9 volts. If you're going to use one of these, make sure you're using a center positive power connector. There isn't a one player mode, so I'm trying to control both game pedals myself. The gameplay here isn't going to be riveting, but you can see what it looks like at least. The conversion box generally works, but the picture isn't great. That first game was tennis. Now I'll show you a quick demo of football, or if you're in the United States, soccer. I'll close out the 2000K demo with squash, which I guess is similar to racquetball in the United States. I mentioned earlier that the 2000K has four games, but I can't show you the shooting game because I don't have the optional light gun accessory. And even if I did, it wouldn't work with this LCD screen. Now I'll do a quick demo with a 3000H. When I booted the 3000H, I just got static. Then I remembered that I needed to tune the converter box to channel 36. I'll use the auto-tune feature to search for the signal, and I'm going to cut this short so you don't have to watch the whole thing. But what's curious to me is I didn't need to do this for the 2000K, and I'm not sure why. So if you know, drop me a note in the comments. With it tuned in, now I can play. The picture quality of the 3000H is abysmal. I don't know if it's the tuner card or if it's something with the RF modulator in the 3000H. Regardless, you can compare tennis on the 3000H to the 2000K here. The big difference is that on the 3000H, every game has the same colors, while on the 2000K, it used different background colors for each game.
Well, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about these early Commodore devices. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned the bug in the first production run of the 7600 chips. I'll close out by letting you watch a game of soccer to the very end so you can see that the 2000K is not afflicted by the bug. I wouldn't expect it to be, given that this is a 7601 and therefore long removed from the first production run of the 7600. If you notice how much clearer the video is here, well, that can be your preview to my next video about the Commodore Pong consoles, where I show you how to modify them to do composite video output. I'll see you next time.